We also are delighted to welcome Mohamed Siyari to his first FSC. We, as administrator, have allowed ourselves the first question which is to ask Mohamed to introduce himself to the many investors who haven't had a chance to meet him yet and perhaps explain his perspective on the business. 12.34 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. My name is Mohamed Ziari. I was born in Paris, France and grew up there. I am an engineer by background and a graduate of the School of Mines in Nancy, France. My first job was as a reservoir engineer in a subsidiary of Gaze de France Group, before I left to be involved in consulting and later in a small boutique investment banking house. Advisor Yang Finance Group, UF. 12.37 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Before joining Sound Energy in 2017, I was managing all the operations funded or managed by UF, including OGIF, the Moroccan private equity fund which owns today approx. 25% of Sound Energy. During my 10 years in UF, I was involved in restructuring different businesses under stress in multiple sectors including, real estate, telecommunication and energy. For instance, one of our last operations was to re-energize the project of the first large-scale coal-to-power plant in Senegal, Western Africa. With the help of the African Development Bank and the Netherlands Development Finance Company, FMO, before selling the business to an Israeli billionaire, during the construction phase. 12.38 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Before joining Sound Energy in 2017, I was managing all the operations funded or managed by UF, including OGIF, the Moroccan private equity fund which owns today approx. 25% of Sound Energy. During my 10 years in UF, I was involved in restructuring different businesses under stress in multiple sectors including, real estate, telecommunication and energy. For instance, one of our last operations was to re-energize the project of the first large-scale coal-to-power plant in Senegal, Western Africa. With the help of the African Development Bank and the Netherlands Development Finance Company, FMO, before selling the business to an Israeli billionaire, during the construction phase. 12.38 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. I was also involved in setting up new businesses in Morocco, like a 1,000-hectare farming platform in northern Morocco dedicated to exporting produce to international markets. 12.39 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Before I joined Sound Energy, I was managing the Olandgas Investment Fund, OGIF, which was set up in the middle of the decade 2000, by the main financial institutions in Morocco. In order to support the early exploration work required to assess the Tendrera Basin potential, and if it can be unlocked to fuel Moroccan growth at that time, Power demand growth was higher than 7% and the development of the industry and country. So far, Morocco imports also all the oil and gas necessary for its economy. The strategy of the state is to develop the renewable energy and to promote domestic hydrocarbon production in order to reduce its dependency on imported supplies. In this strategy, domestic gas production fits perfectly with the renewable power generation because currently gas-fired power production is the best option available to balance the power mix. In COP22, Morocco announced that gas-fired power capacity will be required from increase substantially from 800 MW to 5,300 MW, that is plus 4,500 MW, by 2050. The demand is so huge that the state of Morocco is still thinking building LNG importation facilities in long term, if no new resources are unlocked in Morocco. You can see the strategic importance of establishing a domestic gas supply from the Tendrera Basin. 12.39 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Eastern Morocco demonstrated its potential and it should play a key role in the security of national gas supply of the country. Nevertheless, time to market is key to be a proactive player in the Moroccan plan to develop its economy and to become the main regional hub in Africa. Morocco has aspirations to be a key partner for the UK in the future, particularly after Brexit, as the two countries strengthen their existing economic relationships. 12.40 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Given this perspective, when I joined Sound Energy in 2017, my first task was to secure our development concession rights after tender discovery and then to market the gas that will be produced. 12.46 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. On the exploration side. I was also asked to deliver the drilling operations TE9 and TE10 on schedule, within budget and safely. 
Even if the outcome was not what was expected in terms of commerciality, the joint team Schlumberger Sound Energy and Morocco Isla delivered a great job. 12.46 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. I believe the potential is still there and we all agree that further drilling is needed to unlock the potential. Indeed, in a 23,000 km2 basin, more or less the size of Wales, with the underlying geology as ours, it is quite weird to have only one single gas field, the one we have unlocked so far. 12.47 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. So we have not come to the end of our Moroccan story yet. We are at the start of a new chapter for Sound Energy in Morocco. We need first to close the deal with the selected private company and then help our new partner efficiently deliver first gas. Securing a key gas supply to the nation of Morocco and to guarantee future profitability for Sound Energy. 12.47 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. The strategy in the 12 next months will be Morocco-centric. We have multiple options for profitable ways forward. My priority will be focused on our Morocco assets by 12.48 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Helping our partner to get first gas as rapidly as possible. Our first customer, the state-owned company, only requires that we achieve first gas by the end of 2021 and the industrials are also eager to gain access to this domestic gas supply. 12.48 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Progressing the continued exploration of the Tendrera Basin. The 2017-18 seismic acquisition improved our understanding of the subsurface leads and matured them into drillable prospects such as M5, in Inul or SBK, in Greater Tendrera. 12.49 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Unlocking the potential of Sidi Mokhtar and bringing in a partner so support exploration of the prospectivity we see. 12.49 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Strengthening our relationships in Morocco, with the support of the national oil company in Haim and our corner investor, Ogif. 12.50 p.m. Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. The opportunity to become the main gas producer in Morocco is now. Let's take it together. 12.51 p.m. Question from Eric. What is the sound's current employee head count including contractors and zero hours contracts? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. As announced, we are resizing staff in line with our current operation and in preparation of the ongoing discussion to transact with our potential purchaser. The exact numbers will be shared in the 2019 annual report. 12.52 p.m. Question from Ingson. With the loss of the ICFO. CEO and Chairman in quick succession is the sound management preempting the result of the vote by shareholders on the agreement. Is there a plan B if the vote is negative? Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Yes there is a plan B. 12.54 p.m. Question from Ingson. Is there a link between the anonymous investors who partook in the two most recent sound energy cash raises and the JV partner? Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. The company is not aware of any link. 12.55 p.m. Question from Cyber Monkey. What is the current position with Sidi Mokhtar? John Argent, Exploration Manager. Thanks for this question and I can reassure you that whilst the company has focused on the sales process for the Eastern Moroccan portfolio we still maintain activity on our Sidi Mokhtar permits in. The West we also continue to engage with potential farm out candidates and we will provide an update once an agreement is reached. We are maintaining this as a competitive process it would not be appropriate to disclosure further information at this time on ongoing discussions. We have been awarded the environmental permit following completion of the environment impact assessment and community consultations. Whilst this region of Morocco has experienced an oil and gas exploration and production operations in the past, the last seismic survey completed in the region operated by Longreach Oil and Gas Limited Contracting Prospect Chinesa from August 2012 to February 2013 comprising 520 line kilometers. We are mindful that there is a higher population density and agricultural assertivity than across our eastern Morocco portfolio. The community engagement has necessarily been an extensive exercise undertaken over a 10-month period with an experienced local specialist consultancy. In parallel, we have also completed the market inquiry engaging with leading service providers for service availability. We have received positive responses from multiple providers. 
as we are maintaining this as a competitive process it would not be appropriate, nor in our interests, to disclosure further information at this time on ongoing commercial discussions. 12.57 p.m. Question from Eric. The optional 9% has a significant portion tied up in a carry element. Can we have a guarantee that these carry funds will be utilized for exploration rather than an overspend on feed or for golden handshakes? If this deal is undertaken in its described format will Sound Energy shareholders receive any direct dividends prior to first gas? How many years has the purchaser been a registered private company in the UK? What is the reason to withhold the name of the purchaser involved in the agreement? Without breaking any confidentially agreements with companies, please provide any details of the alternative offers described in the agreement RNS. What is the Sound's current employee head count including contractors and zero hours contracts? Provide the details of Rothschild's activity in relation to this deal. What costs have been incurred so far and what cost will be due to Rothschild on successful completion of the agreement? What has been the involvement of Nheim and Schlumberger with this deal? This is an important question as the funding of the infrastructure has undergone a massive change from boot to direct funding. Is Sound Energy paying 100% of the agreement transaction expenses and associated costs or will this be shared? Will the new joint venture be a listed company? If not, why not? Please provide a list of all of the current institutional shareholders on the Sound Company Register. If the transaction is complete but fired is not reached, will Sound have to repay the initial tranche 55% plus cost? Will any current Sound employees be employed by the new joint venture who? Will Sound carry out due diligence on the purchaser? How many companies I have had acknowledged communication with Sound Energy in relation to being a farm-out partner for City Mokhtar in the last four weeks? Please provide details of the current status of work commitments in relation to the City Mokhtar license. Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Yes we will be carrying out due diligence on the purchaser. We continue to engage with a variety of companies with regards to the farm down of City Mokhtar and will provide an update once an agreement is reached. We are maintaining this as a competitive process it would be inappropriate, and not in our interests, to disclosure further information at this time on any ongoing discussions. I can reassure you that whilst the company has focused on the sales process for the Eastern Moroccan portfolio we still maintain activity on our city motor permits in the West we have been awarded. The environmental permit following completion of the environment impact assessment and community consultations. Whilst this region of Morocco has experienced an oil and gas exploration and production operations in the past, the last seismic survey completed in the region operated by Longreach Oil and Gas Limited. Contracting prospect in ESA was from August 2012 to February 2013, comprising 520 line kilometers. We are mindful that there is a higher population density and agricultural activity than across our eastern Morocco portfolio. The community engagement has necessarily been an extensive exercise undertaken over a 10-month period with an experienced local specialist consultancy. In parallel, we have also completed the market inquiry engaging with leading service providers for service availability. We have received positive responses from multiple providers. As we are maintaining this as a competitive process it would not be appropriate, nor in our interests, to disclosure further information at this time on ongoing commercial discussions. 12.58 p.m. Question from WDW. City Motor am I correct in believing that we need to shoot seismics within 2020 or risk losing the asset? John Argent, Exploration Manager. The initial period of the license ends in October 2020. Our committed work program includes the acquisition and processing of 500 line kilometers of 2D seismic data. We can elect at our discretion to enter the first extension period which extends the license to October 2023 and includes the additional commitment to drill one exploration well. 12.58 p.m. Question from Ingson. Are the major shareholders in Sound Energy happy with the agreement and the share price? Sound Energy, Administrator. Apologies, we cannot comment on third-party opinion. 12.58 p.m. Question from WDW. City Mokhtar 1, how long would seismics take to complete 2, at what cost to sound 3, how quickly could we start if we wanted to? John Argent, Exploration Manager. The time to complete onshore seismic acquisition depends on the size and to a varying extent the design parameters and terrain to be covered. 
As a general rule of thumb ensure surveying with vibrances in relatively benign terrain should acquire data at a productivity rate of 6-12 line kilometers a day. For example in Tenderera and Anul we achieved an average productivity of 10 line kilometers per working day across the life of the survey. Excluding mobilization and demobilization a 1,000 line kilometer acquisition should be completed in approx. 5 months. 12.59 p.m. Question from WDW. Do we have a plan for further exploration in eastern Morocco? John Argent, Exploration Manager. Yes very much so. We have multiple near-term drill-ready prospects including SBK, TE11 and M5. We believe this is what is required to unlock the basin potential. We are therefore very focused on drilling these and other exploration wells. These opportunities were outlined by Brian Mitchina at the last AGM. 1 p.m. Question from WDW. Once first gas is achieved how would sound be paid? Is it on an annual basis etc? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Pursuant to Sound Energy's remaining interest in the production concession, production revenues would be distributed among the participants in proportion to their remaining interests. Normally within the oil and gas industry, production revenues are distributed on a monthly basis. 101 p.m. Question from Eric. How many companies I have had acknowledged communication with Sound Energy in relation to being a farm out partner for City Mokhtar in the last four weeks? John Argent, Exploration Manager. We continue to engage with a variety of companies with regards to the farm down of City Mokhtar and will provide an update once an agreement is reached. We are maintaining this as a competitive process it would be inappropriate, and not in our interests, to disclosure further information at this time on any ongoing discussions. 1.02 p.m. Question from Ingson. All shareholders be told the identity of the purchaser before voting on the deal? Mohamed Siari, Interim CEO? Yes, absolutely. 1.03 p.m. Question from Ingson. If the agreement goes through and Sound Energy is a minority partner how will we be able to trust and audit what goes on? Will the JV be registered in the UK under British law or in Morocco? Fred Lagaha, General Counsel. The JV is intended to be UK registered. Once the transactions is signed the company will explain to shareholders how the structure protects Sound's interests. 1.05 p.m. Question from Ingson. The share price of 3-4p reflects what investors think about the agreement. What value does the Sound Energy Management think the agreement should be or are investors correct? Mohamed Siari, Interim CEO. Not up to the management to comment on what the market values the deal at but independent sources value it at 19p, 17p less debt. 1.05 p.m. Question from Ingson. If the agreement gets voted through and the company decides to relinquish City Mokta will Sound Energy be in danger of becoming a cash shell and suffering removal from AIM? Would its share of the JV be enough of an asset to keep the company on AIM? Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. Yes share of the asset will still make it eligible for AIM. 1.06 p.m. Question from Ingson. What happens to Brian and the geology team of the agreement goes through? Will they join the JV partner or stay with Sound Energy? Mohamed Ziari, Interim CEO. The staffing plans are in progress, but no firm decisions have yet been made with regards to the transfer or dedication of Sound Energy employees to the JV partner. The company continues, as it has always done, to right-size our resources whilst we retain the appropriate skill set and continuity to deliver our operations both efficiently and safely. 1.07 p.m. Question from Ingson. What is the current cash position at Sound Energy? It is important to know with the CEO going. Question from Ingson. What happens to Brian and the geology team of the agreement goes through? Will they join the JV partner or stay with Sound Energy? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. The staffing plans are in progress but no firm decisions have yet been made with regards to the transfer or dedication of Sound Energy employees to the JV partner. The company continues, as it has always done, to right-size our resources whilst we retain the appropriate skill set and continuity to deliver our operations both efficiently and safely. 1.07 p.m. Question from Ingson. What is the current cash position at Sound Energy? 
It is important to know with the CEO going. It was £11.3 million at end of June, has it changed substantially? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial We can only report what was in the last RNS which was for the interims and this was £11.1 million. 107 p.m. Question from Ingson. Is it the intention of the management to pay off outstanding debt immediately if the agreement goes through or will the debt be it going until 2021? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. If the transaction is done, we will revert back to you on due course on this matter. The board will study different possible scenarios including distribution of a part of the cash proceeds of the shareholders. 1.09 p.m. Question from Emailed Questions. How much of the upfront cash component of the agreement, 55% of $54.3 million approximate? £23.23 million. Does the company envisage retaining after the payment of fees and expenses related to the deal? Will the remaining funds be earmarked for repayment of the outstanding debts, as was previously outlined by management? Given that the outstanding debt is currently larger than the proposed upfront cash component of the agreement, will the company need to raise capital in order to remain a going concern? and to participate in any exploration program that were to occur prior to FID and first gas. Mohamed Seliri, Interim CEO Good question. If transaction is done, we will revert back to you on due course on this matter. The board will study different possible scenarios, including distribution of a part of the cash proceeds to the shareholders. 1.10 p.m. Question from Emailed Questions. Passing operatorship to a private company puts shareholders in an extremely poor position. It limits the information that must be made available to stakeholders. It significantly curtails the corporate governance requirements vs our current state, and it gives sound shareholders limited recourse in future if the development of Tendrera does not go to plan. How do you assuage these concerns? Furthermore, what weighting was given to the provenance of the offerer when assessing the offers you received? Can you confirm once and for all that there is absolutely no link, however tenuous, between the proposed JV partner purchaser and any existing or former employee of Sound Energy PLC or any of their associates. Fred Lacuha, General Counsel. There is no link between the proposed purchaser and any existing or former employee or any associates of any of them obviously as far as the company is aware. 1.13 p.m. Question from Cybermonkey. Personally I think the deal is terrible, would it not been more beneficial to raise and drill the Paleozoic than sell half of the Eastern Moroccan license for very little return for investors? Mohamed Seliri, Interim CEO Every shareholder will have a vote on the deal. It is not the board's intention to preempt the shareholder vote. 1.15 p.m. Question from WDW. Have our institutional investors been approached or made comment on the reduction in market cap? Sound Energy, Administrator. We cannot comment on the current movement on the share price but so far our corner investor has always given a strong support to our activity in Morocco. 1.16 p.m. Question from WDW. I am worried about the CEO, CFO and chairman all leaving within a very short period of time. Would you agree that this can worry the markets into thinking that something is untoward? Mohamed Seliri, Interim CEO 
The CEO exit has been long planned and has been signaled to the market multiple times over the years. The chairman was a totally unexpected health issue. 1.17 p.m. Question from Eric. If this deal is undertaken in its described format will Sound Energy shareholders receive any direct dividends prior to first gas? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO The board, if the deal transacts, would have to decide what to do with the US dollar 54,3 M upfront cash proceeds. No decision has been taken at this point, deal isn't even complete yet but it will be in due course and communicated at that time. We would remind everyone that the cash flows from a 23.3% position in a 50p production scenario are significant. 1.19 p.m. Question from Eric. How many years has the purchaser been a registered private company in the UK? Fred Lacuha. General Counsel. The identity will be required to be announced once we sign a binding document. Until then we cannot guide I'm afraid. 1.20 p.m. Question from Eric. Provide the details of Rothschild's activity in relation to this deal. What costs have been incurred so far and what cost will be due to Rothschild on successful completion of the agreement? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO The terms of the Rothschild's engagement have not been disclosed by RNS and are confidential but we do believe we secured very competitive terms. 1.21 p.m. Question from Eric what has been the involvement of on him and Schlumberger with this deal? This is an important question as the funding of the infrastructure has undergone a massive change from boot to direct funding. Sound Energy, Administrator We cannot comment on third parties' positions we're afraid. 1.21 p.m. Question from Eric is Sound Energy paying 100% of the agreement transaction expenses and associated costs or will this be shared? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO Shared, each side pays their own. 1.22 p.m. Question from Daniel Hall Could you please provide the current cash position and monthly overhead expenditure? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. I'm afraid we can't provide this outside of what has already been announced on RNS. 1.23 p.m. Question from Eric. Please provide a list of all of the current institutional shareholders on the Sound Company Register. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. Our principal cornerstone investor is a GIF with approximately 23%. Other shareholder information is available through the normal AIM channels. 1.24 p.m. Question from Speculator. THRE recent agreement RNS states about the receipt of cash 55% on completion of the proposed transaction from which the company will meet transaction expenses and related costs. This is nearly £30 mil. Are our transaction expenses and related costs £30 mil or will there be funds left over? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial there will likely be material funds left over but the board has yet to make a decision on what to do with them. 1.25 p.m. Question from Eric. Will any current sound employees be employed or contracted to the new joint venture, who? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. The staffing plan is still being worked on and agreed but the intention is for Sound's technical staff to work for the new JV.
either by moving over or working in sound but dedicated to and plan for by the JV. 1.25 p.m. Question from Kexter. With our share price hammered and the only way to add real value at the drill bit can you see sound in AJV drilling in 2020, or do we have to wait for first gas revenues until we can explore? John Argent, Exploration Manager Given that we still believe in the basin potential, we are working hard to enable further exploration drilling as soon as we are able. 1.26 p.m. Question from Gasman. If Edison report valued sound at 27p why couldn't we get that basic value and more for exploration potential? The reality is the SP is sitting at 4p now and it's looking like a downward spiral. Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Valuation was done prior to 10.9 and 10.10 independent valuation. Deal values it at 17p, 19p less debt. 1.27 p.m. Question from Eric. If the transaction is complete but FID is not reached, will Sound have to repay the initial tranche, 55%, plus cost? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. That is not the intention no. The upfront cash is not intended to be reimbursable. We will explain in detail how we protect Sound's rights and entitlement to production cash flows when we sign the deal. 1.27 p.m. Question from Kexter. Will Brian and the team stay on and do they still believe our license holds 31 TCF? John Argent, Exploration Manager. We have constrained our estimates of the exploration potential using a basin modeling study undertaken by a leading independent petroleum systems analysis consultancy, IGI Limited. These estimates are stated as original gas in place, a JIP, unrisked without an associated geological chance of success and on a gross basis. The output of the basin modeling study provides an estimated exploration potential of the licenses as 20 TCF gas equivalent, mid-case, unrisked original gas in place. The basin model further defines a possible range of estimated exploration potential across the entire permit area, with a 7 TCF low case of unrisked original gas in place and if all the key elements of the petroleum systems model are present, an upside case of 34 TCF of unrisked original gas in place. Whilst the results of the exploration drilling campaign were extremely disappointing for us and our shareholders we still believe in the potential of our licenses. We believe that neither 10.9 and 10.10 failed by way of a lack of gas charge and as a consequence we maintain our confidence in the basin model. We have multiple near-term drill-ready prospects located elsewhere in basin including SBK, Chiron and M5. We believe that further drilling is required to unlock the potential of our acreage and are very focused on drilling these and other exploration wells. These opportunities were outlined by Brian Michener at the last AGM. With regards to the team, we continue, as it has always done, to right-size our resources whilst we retain the appropriate skill set and continuity to deliver our operations both efficiently and safely. 1.30 p.m. Question from Emailed Questions. The RNS dated the 7th of November, 2019 states that Sound will become a carried, non-operating company. This was appended to the announcement of the CFO's resignation, however it appears to be a material change in the nature of the company. Given that it is currently the operator of two hydrocarbon exploration licenses and one production concession. If the company plans to no longer operate City Mukta, shouldn't that information be made explicitly clear to shareholders? 
Does the company envisage relinquishing the license, or transferring operatorship to another operator for a cash consideration? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO A position on Sidi Mukta will be taken in due course and announced. Likely when we sign the Eastern Morocco transaction I can reassure you that whilst the company has focused on the sales process for the Eastern Moroccan portfolio we still maintain activity on our Sidi Mukta permits in the West. We also continue to engage with potential farm-out candidates and we will provide an update once an agreement is reached. We are maintaining this as a competitive process it would not be appropriate, nor in our interests, to disclosure further information at this time on ongoing discussions. We spent long time engaging with local communities to get EIA approved. We are doing a competitive market enquiry to select a contractor for the 2D seismic acquisition to be delivered. 1.30 p.m. Question from Speculator We issued shares to the value of about £9 million for Sidi Mokhtar. Shareholders have yet to see any return on this investment. What are the plans for this license which secures the Euro 28.8 mil bond? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial We issued C.43 million shares in 2016. At the time of entering the respective SPAs the sound energy share price was C.17 PPS which implied a transactional value of approximately £7.4 million. As we previously announced, we have been undertaking a farm down exercise ahead of a potential seismic acquisition campaign which is part of a phased approach through which we hope to unlock the exploration potential of the city Mokhtar licenses. 1.31 p.m. Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial We issued C.43 million shares in 2016. At the time of entering the respective SPAs the sound energy share price was C.17 PPS which implied a transactional value of approximately £7.4 million. As we previously announced, we have been undertaking a farm down exercise ahead of a potential seismic acquisition campaign which is part of a phased approach through which we hope to unlock the exploration potential of the city Mokhtar licenses. 1.31 p.m. Question from Kexter. My final question. Can you see multiple drills at Tendreira to unlock the basin and has the team now got a much greater knowledge after having presumably more time to study the seismic acquired? I thank you for your time in answering my questions. John Argent, Exploration Manager From our continued evaluation of the data and samples obtained from the seismic surveys and wells we, and others historically, have drilled we believe that neither T9 and T10 failed by way of a lack of gas charge and as a consequence we maintain our confidence in our knowledge of the basin and the Tajai play. Although we continue maintain that the risk of encountering effective reservoir is high. We have multiple near-term drill-ready prospects located elsewhere in basin including SBK, Chiron and M5. We believe that further drilling is required to unlock the potential of our acreage and are very focused on drilling these and other exploration wells. 1.35 p.m. Question from Speculator Can Marco Fumagalli be considered independent if Soundo Greenbury Euro 28.8 mil? In bonds due June 2021, surely he would be more amenable to accepting a deal which provides sufficient cash up front to retire these bonds. Were there other offers more beneficial to private shareholders that involved a free carry with no cash up front? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial 
We confirm Marco is not considered independent. He is an interim chairman until a new chairman can be appointed. We have not and would not expect to provide commentary on other offers. 1.37 p.m. Question from Nino. The company will be aware that it has lost the confidence and trust of many private investors who represent almost 50% of the company's share register. In a recent email response, James confirmed that if the currently proposed deal did not sign or shareholders did not vote for it then the board would have the choice to either propose another transaction or to go alone. He also advised that Sue has been working on a backup plan in case that was needed. Can you confirm that we have a number of acceptable opinions to fall back on? Also, irrespective of whichever deal is finally recommended, can the board provide an unequivocal assurance that any deal will have the best interests of private investors at its core? Mohamed Seleri, Interim CEO it is correct we have been working a backup plan. We do not distinguish between any one shareholder or another and are not allowed to. We can confirm that any deal will be the board's view of the best deal for all shareholders. Thereafter every shareholder has a vote on the deal. 1.38 p.m. Question from Ingson. Malsey said in his blog today, James stays as a consultant until next May to lead the deal behind the scenes. Is that true? Mohamed Seleri, Interim CEO. We would refer you to the announcement dated the 12th of November which sets out the information on the resignation of Mr. Parsons. 1.38 p.m. Question from Ingson. How many people are in the Sound Energy Compliance Department? Fred Lacuha, General Counsel. We have a corporate lawyer, myself, and a compliance officer, who is part of the finance team. 1.39 p.m. Question from Margaret Chan. What does it mean that the company will be non-operational? Where will the company make its profit going forward? Will there be further expeditions going forward? John Argent, Exploration Manager Thanks for this question, let me address the meaning of operator and non-operator in this context. Joint Ventures, JV, are fairly ubiquitous in the oil and gas industry with around 70% of upstream investment provided through alliance or JV relationships. Companies will often enter into JVs to share the risk and sheer capital intensive load associated with oil and gas projects. An oil and gas JV in its most basic form is fairly straightforward. One company within the JV will take on the operator role. The operator has the responsibility to manage and carry out the various exploration and production operations on behalf of the JV license group and well as providing a share of the capital required. Examples of operations include geophysical surveying, drilling, facilities engineering and construction. All of which have been undertaken by Sound Energy on behalf of the existing joint venture group. The other joint venture participants are known as non-operating companies. A non-operator provides a share of the capital required, and in some circumstances expertise. 1.41 p.m. Question from Speculator. Will minimum shareholder communication standards be included in the proposed deal with the unknown farm in partner so that private shareholders do not only have an annual report to rely on for ongoing information? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial as a listed company Sound will still be required to announce every price sensitive operation and yes Sound would expect to have rights to receive updates. So an investor can expect the information flow to remain largely unchanged. 
1.41 p.m. Question from Daniel Hall. A couple of questions read the potential part sale of Tendreira, assuming it goes through in its current form, what is the plan for the cash when received? On reading the RNS and the way the deal has been structured it seems the main focus of the company purchasing the asset is to build the required infrastructure and get to first gas. Rather than further exploration. Can you please provide thoughts around timing for both an exploration program and FID and delivery of first gas? Could you also please provide an estimate as to how much of the US dollar 58.5 M carried amount will be allocated to each program? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO Questions on the detail of the transaction will be handled when and if we sign the transaction. Nevertheless, we can ensure that Sound Energy team will keep working to explore and to unlock further Tendreira Basin. 1.42 p.m. Question from Daniel Hall. Could you please provide an estimate as to how much it would cost for a five-well exploration program based on our current ownership of Tendreira? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. The exploration well costs range from between $7 and $10 million depending on the well depth, location and design. 1.47 p.m. Question from Speculator. What cash at hand and short-term deposits are available to the company as of today? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. I'm afraid we can't provide this outside of what has already been announced on RNS. 1.48 p.m. Question from Kexter. City has sat silently for some time. Have we got any interest in a farm in from any parties? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. I hope that John's previous answer on City Mukta has helped. We are continuing to engage with potential farm-out candidates and we will provide an update when we are able. We are maintaining this as a competitive process and it would not be appropriate to disclosure further information at this time. 1.53 p.m. Question from Thane. Will any of the money payable in the proposed deal be paid to shareholders? If so. When will this be paid and how much per share? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. It is an option. The board will address it once the deal is closed. 1.54 p.m. Question from Ingson. At what stage does on him start paying its 25% of costs? Would it be before first gas? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. On him has to pay its share of concession costs from the point of concession award. So they are already required to pay their share. 1.55 p.m. Question from Jazz. Why can't the payment be paid as dividends to shareholders? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. This is a possible outcome but the board will decide on this nearer the time. Right now we are focused on securing the deal and then getting it approved. 1.55 p.m. Question from Ingson. When can a GIF increase its stake in sound energy if it chose to do so? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. A GIF like any shareholder can buy or sell shares as it chooses. 1.56 p.m. Question from Ingson. Is Marco Fumagalli the correct person to be the chairman of Sound Energy at the present time? Is there not a conflict of interest when he is connected to the bonds debt and would be interested in passing the agreement solely for the purpose of attaining cash to pay off the debt? Is this not putting the integrity of all other directors at risk? 
Is there not a dereliction of duty on the part of all directors, staying or leaving? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO Marco is Interim Chairman while a suitable replacement for Simon is found. 1.56 p.m. Question from Ash What information would be used to decide the next drill location? How much confidence is there in the seismic we have for Tendreira? Brian Michener, Exploration Director We have a combination of better quality new seismic and older vintage seismic, but reprocessed, which will be critical to enable the unlocking of the basin with new wells. Is Mohamed Serai the correct person to be CEO at the moment, whether temporary or not? Is his link to AJIF not a conflict of interests? Are there now two classes of shareholder in sound energy? Are shareholders being let down by all directors, whether staying or going? Fred Lacuha, General Counsel Mr. Sayri is not employed by either AJIF or AFG, the investment bank which manages the private equity fund. He is the ex-manager of AJIF and obviously has strong relationships to our cornerstone investor which should serve as a positive. As with every director when a conflict of interest is identified it is flagged and the conflicted director does not play a part in that decision. 1.59 p.m. Question from Ash. Is the plan to relinquish Sidi Mukta? Why has nothing meaning been done with it? Is it still a backup plan in the event of Eastern Morocco failure? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO No, we keep working on Sidi Mokhtar. There is no plan to drop Sidi Mokhtar. 2 p.m. Question from David Lane we are moving through an energy transition it appears that many investors now view oil and gas E&P companies as toxic investment how do you view the appetite of investors? Brian Michener, Exploration Director One of the reasons we have remained gas focused as a company is that gas is very much viewed as a transition fuel. So while oil and gas have lost favor amongst some investors we feel that there is a preference for gas over oil. 2.01 p.m. Question from Ash. Is there a prospect of a farm out and free carry at Sidi Mukta? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. We keep working on Sidi Mukta to deliver our work commitments. We have just received a formal EIA approval from the local authorities. We are making a market enquiry to select the best contractor to acquire 2D seismic. In the meantime, we have engaged a selective and competitive process to bring a farm INE. We are not allowed to disclose anything and we will do it in due course. 2.01 p.m. Question from Ingson. Is losing the CEO, CFO and Chairman embarrassing for sound energy? Is it not a reflection of lack of trust in the company? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO The CEO's plans to exit has been telegraphed for over 18 months via RNSs. The Chairman was an unexpected health issue. 2.03 p.m. Question from Ingson has the Tendreira land which Sound Energy obtained from a GIF in exchange for 29.9% of the company been of any use of value to the company? Were Sound Energy wrong to do that deal? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO The AJIF deal was critical to the company to secure in-country partners and also increase our percentage in all our Eastern Morocco licenses, including the concession. 2.03 p.m. Question from Thane. Why is our future involvement with Eastern Morocco described as being as a synthetic involvement? 
Mohamed Sayri, interim CEO. It is intended that Sound's retained share is secured via contracts with the JV rather than direct license ownership, hence synthetic. 2.06 p.m. Question from Thara. Do we have any indication of the kind of exploration drilling program that we are to follow? This program seems to be key rationale for the deal but as yet, we have no idea on what could be a way forward. Askenberger expected to be involved going ahead in this program. Brian Michener, Exploration Director. I hope that some of the previous answers have provided clarity around our thinking. We have multiple near-term drill-ready prospects including SBK, Chiron and M5. We believe that further drilling is required to unlock the basin potential and the team are very focused maturing our plans. 2.07 p.m. Question from Emailed Questions. How much of the upfront cash component of the agreement, 55% of $54.3 million approximate? £23.23 million, does the company envisage retaining after the payment of fees and expenses related to the deal? Will the remaining funds be earmarked for repayment of the outstanding debts, as was previously outlined by management? Given that the outstanding debt is currently larger than the proposed upfront cash component of the agreement, will the company need to raise capital in order to remain a going concern? And to participate in any exploration program that were to occur prior to FID and first gas? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Good question. If transaction is done, we will revert back to you on due course on this matter. The board will study different possible scenarios, including distribution of a part of the cash proceeds to the shareholders. 2.08 p.m. Question from Thane. What is the plan to develop the City Mokhtar license? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. As we previously announced, we have been undertaking a farm-down exercise ahead of a potential seismic acquisition campaign, which is part of a phased approach through which we hope to unlock the exploration potential of the City Mokhtar licenses. We have also recently completed an EIA on the license in readiness for the potential seismic acquisition campaign. 2.08 p.m. Question from Sound 2017. Are Schlumberger still invested? They can't be too pleased to see where the share price is and seeing the CEO, CFO and Chairman resign. Brian Michener, Exploration Director. The current JV and partnering arrangements with Schlumberger remain unchanged. 2.09 p.m. Question from Richard O'Cullen. Will Sound Energy be a completely carried entity as suggested in the last RNS or will we be expected to pay for costs such as drilling, post-first gas, and exploration, staff etc.? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. The key terms of the HOTS were announced in the RNS of the 6th of November 2019 including details of the proposed carry arrangement sound will retain 23.3% of Eastern Morocco so will still be liable for costs. In proportion this holding, sound has been actively cutting costs as it entered into a non-operating stage and continues to do so. We will retain an office in Seven Oaks. 2.11 p.m. Question from Richard O'Cullen. Will our new CEO be as contactable and respond to shareholder questions etc., or will shareholders be now kept at arm's length? Sound Energy, Administrator. 
Mohammed will be available to respond to shareholders but as he beds down in his new role we politely request all questions be sent to questions at soundenergypilk.com Mohammed is looking forward to meeting with shareholders in due course and has met many in his previous role as country manager too. 2.12 p.m. Question from Richard O'Cullen. Has a share buyback been considered at any stage? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Not at this stage but thank you for the suggestion. 2.12 p.m. Question from Ash. Brian when you said to Malsey if 10-9 doesn't work out then there is something very wrong what did you mean by that? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. At the time, from the evaluation of the data we had considerable confidence achieving success at 10-9. Our key risk was being unable to identify with confidence one risk element, that of reservoir effectiveness. Unfortunately, 10-9 failed due to this risk, the Tajai reservoir succession at the 10-9 lacked porosity, and therefore was not effective. However, we did detect very small levels of thermogenic gas proving support to there being a gas charge into the 10-9 area. 2.13 p.m. Question from David Lane. Thanks to the guys who have stepped up to take over from James and Simon and JJ. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. Thank you for your kind words. We had many people write in with encouraging and kind words and we would like to thank them here. 2.13 p.m. Question from David Lane. We have debt in the form of bonds. What is the plan to deal with this debt? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. This will be up to the bot once the deal is finalized. Repayment falls in summer 2021 so one option of course would be to repay this debt as it falls due or potentially roll it but again this will be up to the bot. 2.14 p.m. Question from Thara. How will sound ensure that our minority interests are protected and that we have the same level of visibility in the JV as current? Fred Lacuha, General Counsel. The transactional documentation, when executed will set out the terms of Sound Energy's continuing interests with respect to the Eastern Morocco licenses. 2.14 p.m. Question from Ash. In hindsight would it have been better to not have gas tracked the seismic? Drilling would have taken longer but would we be any worse off than we are now? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. Actually, we are pleased to have fast-tracked the data, and we achieved this with no significant comprise to the imaging required to mature the prospects. The fast-track data set was a full processing sequence delivered by a leading seismic processing contractor, Shewater. The outcome of the wells would not have changed but the cost of waiting for the final processing was very high, more expensive than drilling. 2.15 p.m. Question from Ash. Was the deep dive arranged to lower expectations? It only took a few minutes to explain how much poorer our geology compared to Algeria. Brian Michener Exploration Director. The deep dive was organized at the request of shareholders to provide further geological information to shareholders and allow a better understanding of the predicted subsurface risk. We had many requests to organize it and hence we did. We explained that whilst the quality of the Tajai Reservoir is lower in the Tendreira Basin than Algeria, Sound Energy and our joint venture partner Schlumberger had demonstrated with T6 and T7 that the Tajai in Tendreira could flow at commercial rates, opening the potential of the region for further exploration. 2.17 p.m. 
Question from David Lane. Setting aside Ajif and Marco's connections, do we have any significant major fund investors? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. As at the last share analysis earlier this year we had several funds invested total of around 12 to 14 percent of the register. 2.18 p.m. Question from Thara. Do we have any indication on how Sound intends to operate as a holding company? Are the subsidiary of the holding company expected to be UK or Moroccan domiciled and listed or not? Fred Lacuha, General Counsel. Sound Energy PLC The holding company operates in Morocco through three UK subsidiaries, Sound Energy Morocco East Limited, Sound Energy Meridia Limited and Sound Energy Morocco South Limited. Each of these subsidiaries have branches in country to facilitate the operations. Currently there is no plan to have a separate listing in Morocco. 2.18 p.m. Question from Thara. Please clarify the future intentions for City in terms of meeting its obligations to AHIM and how it will be separated from the Tendreira transaction. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. The proposed Tendreira transaction is unrelated to City Mokhtar. 2.19 p.m. Question from David Lane. What does our cash and net cash position look like now post deal closure? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. We can only quote what is in the public domain and as at the last interims this was 11.1 million pounds. 2:19 p.m. Question from Richard O'Cullen. Is it anticipated that Sound will become a dividend machine after first gas? If so how long is it anticipated that the first dividend will be? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. It will be up to the board with regards to the timing of the dividend. There is also a case to potentially pay a dividend once the deal completes. 2.23 p.m. Question from Thara. I appreciate the difficulty of disclosing identity of the JV partner at this stage but can sound confirm whether or not the partner has been formed for the purpose of this JV and what the status of their fund raises. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. Cannot comment on a private company but no, the partner is an existing company and has not been formed for the potential JV. 2.23 p.m. Question from Ash. Would further drilling be lower risk, i.e. around the host? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. The aim is to drill the remaining lowest risk, high potential wells in the portfolio for example M5, SBK and if there is success test the Paleozoic. Proximity to the horse does not necessarily offer higher potential. 2.23 p.m. Question from Thara. The limitation of the purchaser option of an extra 9% is one year from which date? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. This would be expected to be 12 months from the date of execution of the binding transactional documentation. 2.25 p.m. Question from Matt Sherman 75. Can you please bring us up to date in respect of the geological side of things what is the list of leads, prospects etc. like now? Has seismic interpretation progressed? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. The seismic mapping and prospect maturation has continued through the year. I have outlined some of the drilling opportunities we have ahead of us. 2.26 p.m. Question from Matt Sherman 75. 
Can you please confirm the status of the Schlumberger position on the production concession? The last we heard they had not yet completed the transfer and therefore remain a part of the synthetic arrangement but had moved directly onto the exploration licenses. Fred Lacuha, General Counsel. Correct, it is still synthetic. 2.27 p.m. Question from Matt Sherman 75. Is a GIF supportive of this deal? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. The company cannot comment on the views of its shareholders. There will be a vote which will determine the shareholder position. 2.27 p.m. Question from Ingson. How many people are employed by Sound Energy at present? Who will take up the duties of JJ Trainer in February? Has Mr. Trainer had time to calculate the present cash position? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Question hash 2643 hash question 2681. 2.29 p.m. Question from Ash. Brian how confident are you still in the potential of Tendrera and in the Paleozoic in particular? What gives you confidence despite recent results? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. I hope that some of our previous answers have helped. We remain very confident in the potential of the basin. Whilst the results of the exploration drilling campaign were extremely disappointing for us and our shareholders, we still believe in the potential of our licenses. We believe that neither T9 and T10 failed by way of a lack of gas charge and as a consequence we maintain our confidence in the basin model. We have multiple near-term drill-ready prospects located elsewhere in basin including SBK, Chiron. Paleozoic, and M5. We believe that further drilling is required to unlock the potential of our acreage and are very focused on drilling these and other exploration wells. 2.30 p.m. Question from Sean Green 47. This isn't S live Q and A, because we have been prevented from asking questions live. Why is this? Sound Energy, Administrator. We have hundreds of questions which require responses, therefore following feedback from investors, we have moved away from the live sessions to ensure we have sufficient time to answer questions. 2.31 p.m. Question from Ash. Brian has said that the potential of the Paleozoic could dwarf the Tago, as in Algeria. Does he still believe this? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. Yes, I do Ash. 2.32 p.m. Question from Sean Green 47. Does 3.5p per share accurately value the company? In negotiating the deal, the board would have had to value the company as it currently is. What value did you attach? Sound Energy, Administrator. Unfortunately, we are unable to comment on the Sound Energy share price. 2.33 p.m. Question from Bodorisimus. Have Schlumberger and on him committed to pay their share of costs to bring the TEF-5 Horst into production? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. All parties have to find their own share of the spend on the concession. This is a contractual requirement under the concession agreement. 2.33 p.m. Question from Rich Dennis. Thanks for all your efforts so far in progressing the opportunity. It is unfortunate that the 9 and 10 wells were not successful as I imagine the sentiment and SP may be significantly different from where they languish today. In the event of completing the JV deal, 
what can you tell us about the planned drill program? Can you give us an idea of targets? Assumed volumes. Location. Time scale for each well. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. Pursuant to the potential transaction announced on 6 November 2019, the specific timing of future Eastern Morocco activities would be a matter for consideration of the JV. 2.34 p.m. Question from Rich Dennis. I appreciate you cannot speak for the incoming party but in what scenario would they not exercise the option for the additional 9%? The RNS suggests the 9% would be available on the same terms as the original tranche so with any success with the drill bit surely it would be a certainty to exercise. Sound Energy, Administrator As you rightly point out, unfortunately we cannot comment on third parties. 2.34 p.m. Question from Chimup why has all the social media been shut down after all the hype? Winning communications award previously etc. Sound Energy, Administrator The last six months during the marketing process during which we have paused operations but we continue to tweet our news flow as events arise. Unfortunately we are unable to disclose ongoing commentary on the marketing process during this period. 2.36 p.m. Question from Machuba. Is there no possibility of sound raising more funds and continue to drill themselves? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. This is always a possibility. 2.36 p.m. Question from Ash. Why did you push straight on 2 to 10 regardless of the result at 10-9? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. When evaluating the results of 10-9, the drilling data and formation evaluation. None of our interpretations and learnings directly contradicted our original decision to drill to 10 back to back with 10-9. 2.36 p.m. Question from Ingson. It is sad to see the chairman leave due to sudden illness. I wish him well. Will be be resigning from all his executive positions. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. Thank you for these wishes. We don't follow Mr. Davies other directorships. 2.37 p.m. Question from Daniel. Good morning my question is whether this deal offers best value is the maximum return per share going to be 17p or is there potential to achieve the legacy for our families that was claimed? If there is any sort of return will this be via dividends and over what time frame? The board must admit that this offer is so opaque from the recent RNS that it might as well not have been released as there are now more questions to be answered. I fail to see where long-term holders who bought in as the SP was climbing and based on the promises made will not be left out of pocket. What we want now is honesty, transparency and the option to not dilute through becoming a subsidiary company. Gary Dempster VP Finance and Commercial All equity transactions by directors and associated parties are subject to RNS. 2.38 p.m. Question from Ash James often referred to possible Moroccan consolidation, what was that referring to? Brian Michener, Exploration Director James is referring to business development opportunities in Morocco, of which there are a good few. 2.38 p.m. Question from Bodorisimus. Will the proposed deal enable Sound to meet City Mukta license obligations, seismic, and so retain this asset? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. 
Proposed deal is related to Eastern Morocco. City Mukta is a separate license. We announced yesterday that we received the EIA for the seismic. We will announce further information to shareholders in due course as appropriate via the usual channels. 2.39 p.m. Question from Crudup09. I would like to start by greeting new CEO Mohamed Seri and wish him the best of luck as the new temp. Until voted on by the nominations committee, CEO of Sound Energy. My question is as follows, why was it deemed expedient to go down the route of closed bids when marketing the company instead of inviting public offers and maybe counter offers? Could it be that the Moroccans insist their hydrocarbon assets are husbanded by interested parties such as our new CEO, Mohamed Seri? Maybe it was never the intention that international super majors got a look in. Under this process a bidding war is avoided and the strategically important Moroccan assets come under much tighter control than they would with the likes of Shell, for instance. We don't know who the money is behind the proposed deal so I guess that is one thing that may be causing some concern among shareholders. Mohamed Seri, Interim CEO Thank you for kind wishes. With respect to the marketing process please refer back to the RNS dated the 6th of November 2019 in which we provided a summary of a comprehensive and thorough marketing exercise through which we entered into 23 NDAs, conducted some 15 management presentations and received a number of non-binding offers. 2.40 p.m. Question from Pablo 2. If the agreement goes through, when is it proposed to undertake further drilling? And where? Are we after low-hanging fruit? Are there any plans to explore the Paleozoic soon? Brian Michener, Exploration Director The preferred plans, as per previous answers, are to drill M5, SBK and Paleozoic. We believe that further drilling is required to unlock the potential of our acreage and are very focused on drilling these and other exploration wells. 2.41 p.m. Question from Matt Sherman 75. Can you please illustrate the possible scenarios under the hot deal as to how we could benefit financially as shareholders from the exploration upside? Are contingent payments still a possibility despite not being mentioned in the hot? Mohamed Seri, Interim CEO Under the terms of the potential transaction announced on RNS on 6 November 2019, it is anticipated that Sound Energy would retain a 23.3% interest in the Eastern Morocco portfolio through which shareholders would be in a position to benefit from any future exploration upside. 2.41 p.m. Question from Ingson. I thought, according to quarterly updates, there are at least two ready-to-drill targets at City. Why the seismic? How can there be targets if no seismic has been carried out? Brian Michener, Exploration Director We have two preferred leads based on the interpretation of the historical seismic coverage both of which require further seismic to mature these leads into potentially drillable prospects. 2.42 p.m. Question from Ingson. Are there any ongoing discussions with a possible farm in partners at Sidi Mukta? Mohamed Seri, Interim CEO I hope the previous answers on our plans for Sidi Mukta have answered your question. 2.45 p.m. Question from Pablo 2 Could you give a run-through of what the company sees as likely to happen to our S. Morocco license at Sidi Mukta? Mohamed Seri, Interim CEO. 
I hope the previous answers have helped clarify our position on Sidi Mukta. 2.46 p.m. Question from Kexter. We recently had a placing that raised I think 3 million. What is our cash position and what was this money used for? Please tell me it wasn't for ending contracts for JJ and JP. Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Question hash 2597. 2.48 p.m. Question from Matt Sherman 75. The last we heard on City was that there were interested parties but if this changed, an announcement would be required. Also, parties interested in Tendreira might be interested in both. Can you please clarify status and what is being done to ensure sound can fulfill its obligations on the license within the required timescales? Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO I hope the previous answers have given insight into our plans. 2.49 p.m. Question from Pablo 2 Quite clearly, judging by our SP, the market sees the agreement poorly. Is there something that is being overlooked undervalued by the market? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial We are unable to comment on the share price. 2.55 p.m. Question from Pablo 2 It seems strange that due diligence needs to run until the 14th of February. Has this company not been in the loop for many months already? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial The exclusivity period announced in the RNS of 6 November 2019 is quite standard for a proposed transaction of this nature. 2.57 p.m. Question from Emailed Questions is there any break fee written into the agreement should either party pull out of the deal? It would normal to write one into a deal such as this, otherwise you are giving a free option to the interested party at the expense of other potentially more lucrative opportunities. Sound Energy, Administrator Unfortunately we are unable to give further details on the agreement at this time. 2.57 p.m. Question from Bodorisimus. What proportion of income from the TEF5 host will be returned to shareholders as dividends? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. This would be determined by the BOD at the appropriate time in the future. This would be determined by the BOD at the appropriate time in the future. 2.59 p.m. Question from Ash. Would it be fair to assume that T11 wasn't drilled because of a lack of confidence in a positive result? If not, why not drill it? Brian Michener, Exploration Director. Following the very disappointing results of the T10 well test the board took the decision to explore monetization options available to us. We decided to market our Eastern Morocco portfolio with the view to a sale prior to FID. We therefore paused our operations until after the results of the marketing process. 3.08 p.m. Question from Ingson. Given the performance of the share price and, and its reaction to the agreement have Rothschild been a total waste of money? How much have they been paid? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Question hash 2644. 318 p.m. Question from Jazz. Why can't shareholders be paid the dividend from the initial payment? Gary Dempster, VP Finance and Commercial. Question hash 2714. 3.19 p.m. Mohamed Sayri, Interim CEO. 
Thank you all for your questions over the past seven days and for joining us in this session today. We have received an unprecedented number of questions in, and we have answered all that we can within the regulatory framework. Please be ensured that communication with shareholders will continue, however whilst I bed down into my new role. I request that emails are directed to questions at soundenergyplog.com where the team and I will be happy to respond. I look forward to meeting with many of you in person, in due course.